Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about the most interesting decks to play around with. And today, we're back with a new episode of the Meta Test, where we're gonna try out one of our top meta decks that has just entered our brand new Meta Snapshot our Team Elderblood Meta Snapshot that you can check out in the description of this video. The link is right over there. And this particular deck is uh, described over there with all the matchups and all the information you would need right over there. But we're gonna go through every single card of the uh, Treasure Trove deck uh, in a minute because it's a brand new Pirate's Cove Syndicate deck that is doing really, really well in the meta right now. So this is the deck, or I should say a very, very slight alteration. You know me, I can't resist to just replace just a few cards to make a, a few little adjustments and I'll just pinpoint what the changes are that I made. But this is the deck right here. You can find the link on the Playground website as well uh, down in the description or you can go through our meta snapshot and use it, uh, go from there if you want to because the link for the original deck is right over there. So as usual, we're gonna go through each and every single card. Syndicate is always a bit special because it's a bit, little bit more complicated than the other factions so the, the uh, explanation will be a bit more in depth than usual but if you're not interested in that as usual you can skip through the example matches using the timeline below because it should be segmented into those exact pieces so uh for anybody still here let's go through the deck and you know what for once let's start with the leader ability pirate's cove because it's a leader ability that has not been included in the game for that long just yet and it actually, well, I think I never talked about this leader ability before, but it has received a significant buff uh, just recently with the latest patch. And it actually is now an order ability with two charges, which is the main change, when you each time can spawn a sea jackal on a row of your choice. What does a sea jackal do? He has four power and for two coins, he can boost himself by two. But if you have seven or more coins, you can boost himself for those two coins by three instead so giving you a 50% boost what this leader ability basically does is always give you a spender which is really really good always giving you a spender that can rather efficiently spend coins as well so if you're at nine or eight or seven coins you will gain three uh, points for two coins so a 50% increase as I told you and that immediately gives us basically the team of this deck where it's called the treasure trove deck it's kind of the name that I put on this deck but it's a, a deck that is focused on gaining those coins and spending them as efficiently as possible just gaining as many coins as we can and spending them on all the things that we can spend them on and let's go through all the cards one by one to actually see how we can do that because there's also a bit of poison a small poison package in this deck so you can uh, defend yourself as well but First up, the Fistech Trafficker. Three power, we've seen this guy in our tribute deck as well. He uh, gives you a poison to a unit of your choice. It can be one of your own and can be one of your enemy units as well. But if it's an allied unit, you gain three coins as well. So either you gain three points and you poison an enemy unit or you gain three points, three coins and a poison on one of your own units. Um, it can be used in either direction. I think in this deck it's mainly used as an offensive tool, but if you have an abomination on the field you can definitely poison yourself or you're just in need of those extra coins. You can do that on yourself as well. Then the Mutants Maker. This is a devotion deck, so there are no neutral cards in this deck. And the Mutants Maker is just perfect for a devotion deck as a 4 provision card because he has 4 power and you just gain 3 coins as well. So an easy 7 points for uh, 4 provisions. Which is really good, um, as well as the fact that those three coins could, of course, even be more than one point per coin. So, uh, very, very powerful indeed. Then the Tax Collector, a very simple engine card that only works on the range throw, but at the end of every ally turn, you gain a single coin if the Tax Collector is still on the range throw. And he has four power to just have a little bit of beef to protect himself. But very good engine card uh, just to start with and can be, but it can of course be easily killed off by your opponent. And we have Shakedown. Uh, Shakedown is a crime card. We've seen this in the crime deck before as well. Gives you three coins and boosts an allied unit by three so simple six four four and is also a crime card so if you have any intimidate units on the field those will get boosted as well then rounding out the poison package we also have a double fist stack another crime card that gives you four coins and allows you to poison any unit on the field as well simple as that able to uh, kill uh, taller units 
uh, very, very efficiently if you want to. Then the Sewer Raiders. This is a thinning card, so both of the Sewer Raiders are in this deck. Both have four power and have the ability that if you have four coins in the bank, you will summon the copy from the deck. So if you have those four coins, you play the Sewer Raider, the other copy is pulled from the deck as well, allowing you to thin a bit and giving you eight points for a five provision card, basically. Next up is one of my changes. So basically what I did, this deck originally had both Borsodi brothers in the deck. But I removed both of them and replaced one of them with Kurt for 6 provisions. Kurt has 6 power and you can either put him on the range row and purify a unit of your choice or put him on the melee row and put a bounty on an enemy unit. Allowing you that if you kill that unit, gain coins equal to their base power. Which is a very very flexible card and very handy in this deck as well. Especially against mirrors where you need to take out like a, uh, a poison that is on one of your taller, like for example the sea jackals could be uh, very, very beneficial to be able to purify that. Now we have Sol de Navarrete. Sol de Navarrete is a very powerful card since we're always aiming to have as many coins in our bank as possible. Sol basically allows you to capitalize on those coins without spending them. So he starts at four power and depending on how many coins you have in the bank, he will boost himself by one if you have three coins or less, by two if you have six coins or less, or by three if you have a full bank, so nine coins which is something that we're going to be aiming for, giving you just basically three points per turn. Then we have the Blindheim brothers are both in this deck as well. If you've seen my tribute deck, you know what these guys do, but Gellert give you, gives you five points and two coins on top of that. And for one coin, you can poison an allied unit and boost it by two. As long as you have more than five cards in your hand, you can do this as long as you have coins to do this, giving you a 100% upkeep on your coin expenditure, because you gain two points for every coin that you spend. If you do this in, on an abomination that can purify itself, you will gain four points for every coin, so very important there as well. But once you pass uh, the, that five adrenaline threshold, he will gain a cooldown, only allowing you to spend one coin every turn on his ability. And his brother, on the other hand, Roland, uh, has, has the ability to, whenever you poison a unit, whether it's your own or one of your opponents, you gain two coins. He starts at seven power, so guaranteed to give you seven points regardless, but definitely going to be more and more, since he's really hard to take out as well because of seven power. Then the other addition, aside from the, well, since I removed the Poisoni brothers, is Caesar Bilzen. Caesar is a very peculiar card. So he starts at four power, but on deploy he triggers the profit abilities of his adjacent units. There's not that many profit cards in this deck, so it might be a bit weird, but it is something that I wanted to add to make this a bit more of a slight variation of the deck, because if you can pair this card with one of the stronger cards in a minute, Dijkstra, you will, well, Sigur Ruven basically, you will be able to gain a full bank in one go again. You can do that twice then. He also has a fee ability allowing you to spread boost uh, around the field. So for two coins, you can actually boost an allied unit by two. So you can choose which one you boost and spread out your boosts a bit more than with the Sea Jackal. Then we have the Salamandra Hideout, still the location card, and you, uh, allows you to spawn a failed experiment, Salamandra Abomination, Salamandra Mage, or a Lackey uh, when you play it. And on order, you can actually move a poison from one of your own units to the opponent, okay? basically giving you a double poison in a single turn. Very powerful to take out high-powered units. Usually you want to go with either the Abomination or the Mage, uh, in certain cases, if you need to play the hideout really early, the lackey is going to be interesting or very, very late than the failed experiment just because of the amount of points you're getting. But usually we're going to be focusing on either one of those, depending on if you want to deal some damage or you want to have a unit that you can poison. Then, of course, since we're aiming to gain as many coins as possible, we can't omit the Flying Ordanian. So a three power card for only nine, well, for nine provisions with only three power doesn't mean that much, but this isn't another thinning card. So if you have nine coins uh, in the bank, so a full bank, you will have this card automatically be pulled from either your deck or the graveyard to the field. Um, it is on a random row, so you don't know where it's going to end up, but it gets pulled from the deck or the graveyard regardless. So even if it gets killed by your opponent, as long as your bank is still full, at the end of your next turn, it will be summoned right back to the board. So a very powerful card in this deck, allowing you to usually gain those 9 points over the course of multiple rounds. Plus you gain the thinning of not having this card in your deck anymore. 
Then the Vivaldi Bank are only tutor basically, so gives you three coins and then you can look at the top card of your deck plus an additional card for every coin you possess. You gain three coins, so that basically gives you a look at the top four cards of your deck. You can choose uh, any of those cards, but if you don't go for the top card, you um, need to spend an amount of coins equal to the distance from the top card. So if you wanna play, for example, the third card in your deck, you're gonna have to spend two coins to actually play this card. But a very, very interesting tutor that sometimes comes in handy, for example, if you're faced with a dangerous Cantarella that might be coming up. Um, so you can guarantee to pull your own card from your deck with this. Then we have Philippa Ahart, some, uh, a card that is almost uh, unthinkable to not use in a Syndicate deck. Starts at 3 power but allows you on the point to spend the number of coins equal to an enemy unit's power and seize it. So you can steal your opponent's unit as long as you have enough coins for it. Very powerful and especially if you take one of those juicy engine cards which is what you want to be aiming for. Then another card that has received well, a slight buff, so now you can damage any enemy unit in a Devotion deck because his uh, initial deployability allows you to damage an enemy unit by 6. Um, since we have Devotion, it does not need to be boosted, which is something that the base ability still enforces you to do. Uh, and you gain a coin for every point of excess damage you deal. Basically the original, um, I think that's the... Is that the Blood Money ability? I think it's called the Blood Money ability. Uh, and for 3... Coins you can also destroy an enemy unit with 3 power or less. Very powerful to get rid of swarming units as well. Um, just the 3 for 3 is very very good. Because this also bypasses armor and shields. So uh, something that yeah the cards has seen just use in most of the Syndicate decks these days. Uh, and another card that actually does this is something that we'll see in a minute. Because this is of course Sigir Reuven. Sigir Reuven has Intimidate so gains a point every time you play a crime card. But his more important ability is that he has 4 profit. But increases that profit by 1 for every unique gang category in your starting deck. We have enough. So we have a full bank every time you play Sigur Reuven. If you play Caesar Bilzen right next to him, you will gain another 9 coins. So basically this card, and combined with Caesar Bilzen, gives you a full bank every single time. And he also starts at 4 power, so giving you um, immediately 13 points. So that's good, on top of what you can do with the coins of course, which is going to be even more points if you spend them correctly. Now we have the other card that I wanted to talk about, the auto-include these days in Syndicate, is the Professor. He got a very significant boost because his uh, damage output has been increased from 3 to 4. I kind of missed that in the patch notes on my patch notes video, but he starts at 6 power and his deploy ability is put a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by 4. Basically allowing you to always get 14 points out of this card if you can kill a 4 power unit. Because the bounty will give you that equal amount of coins back and it's going to be at least 4, hopefully, if you can uh, kill something with a 4 base power. If you have the coins for it and you need to, you can also ignore a target's armor if you can pay the 3 coin tribute for it. And then we have Jacques, Miraculous Child, but of course we're going for his final evolution. This is an evolution card that, and we have a devotion deck, so that means that we, at the end of... Well, at round 3 we'll be ending up with Jacques Grandmaster, giving you Veil, 4 coins, a tribute of 4 where you spawn 2 Flaming Rose Footmen, so these guys 3 power and 1 armor, so basically giving you 12 points in 1 go. And he also has a Fee ability, 1 for 1, giving you an extra point on Jacques himself for every coin that you spend on him. Still, also almost an, an auto-include card for Syndicate, um, making it, yeah, a very powerful deck in total. And then of course as stratagem we use the tiger's eye giving you five extra coins as a start if you're actually starting on blue coin which is very useful. Uh, this has also been buffed from four coins to five um, so that is definitely why we're going with this stratagem. We can always spend those coins on sea jackals and the like. And that's it for the decklist. Um, I suggest that we head straight into the example matches because this basically is the deck that I used to gain pro rank this season. It's really really good. Okay, and first up we get Imprisonment, so we're gonna be having some locks on our side of the field, but of course we will be able to circumvent those locks rather easily with Kurt if we actually have him in hand here. Doesn't seem like it, we don't really need double poison uh, since we already have the Fistec Trafficker, so one Fistec can go. One Sewer Raider is perfect actually, we have a Tax Collector to start with as well, so this seems like... An almost perfect hand. We need to be careful with self-poisoning 
uh, against Nilfgaard, of course. So I'm not 100% sure if you want to keep Gallet over here. Um, but yeah, it actually looks like a pretty good starting hand. So let's just finish redrawing with this. Um, because with the Tax Collector, um, we actually get... So if we play Tax Collector, we actually get at least a single coin as a start. Which is good. And then if it at least survives one more turn, and it does... We're going to be able to uh, start benefiting from that. So if we now play Tiger's Eye, that gives us six coins. Uh, which is already enough to put Soul on the field, I feel like. Or we could just play the Sewer Raiders first. Um, no, Soul is going to be more points, so let's just put Soul down. I don't have Kurt in hand, so I won't be able to purify him if needed. Because he'll definitely be a target for the lock here, but at least we get rid of that first imprisonment charge if that's the case. And with this deck, it's actually not that bad to be pretty aggressive and use like something like Horson Jr. or Professor in round one. Because um, you really want to grab that first uh, that first round if you can. So they're gonna grab the tax collector, and I think I saw a tap on the imprisonment as well. So I think Soul is gonna get no. He actually didn't get imprisoned. That is interesting. What would they want to do with a tax collector? I mean, I could destroy it if I want to. But that's going to be way over the coin counts. So I could use Horson Jr. to take out the Nausicaa Sergeant. Or we just go with Sewer Raiders for now. I don't need to overplay this too much. So let's go with Sewer Raiders for now. Thinning our deck just a little bit. If the tax collector stays alive for one more turn, we actually get a full bank, but I'm guessing we're gonna be stopped before that happens. No, we got hunting pack. So that means that our opponent most likely has a tall removal card in hand, because uh, they really don't care about the fact that our uh, our units are yeah going growing this tall like Sol is over here. I think I'm gonna put Roland down, just naked like this. Because I'm guessing I want to draw out at least a few of those imprisonment charges, and now we actually get to uh, nine coins, and that also boosted Soul by three uh, because he is to the right of the tax collector. So the tax collector triggers first, puts the bank up to nine, and then Soul triggers afterwards. So that's why you want to put Soul right next to the tax collector to its right. Just the little things, and there we go. We actually get a pass from our opponent there, and we're gonna keep the bank full. And I'm gonna definitely push with this. So one round one, and we have a pretty good hand right now. Uh, there's a lot of poison in there, even though we just wasted bone basically. We get another tax collector. Do we really want to keep another tax collector over there? There are better cards in our deck still. Um, I'd really want to have Sigi. We have the two poisons. I think the tax collector needs to go. We get another poison. Technically, with the self poison, I can actually get rid of the Fistech Trafficker. Yeah, and we get another Mutants Maker. Okay. We could technically then use this turn to just create our bank again. Uh, let's see where we end up. Let's start with the Mutants Maker. Always a good choice to start, giving us three coins and give, getting us right back up to seven coins in one go. And we get Joachim. So Joachim is getting a Van Morlehem Hunter. That is sad because of course the Van Morlehem Hunter only starts at three power. He doesn't really care about anything else. So I think I could just self-poison at this point. Because that gives us two extra coins, which is just enough to get the bank filled. Although I would want to use one of those charges immediately to boost the uh, Mutants Maker. You know what, let's do that. Let's get to the max and then just boost the Mutants Maker by two. With those... Well, that single coin actually, we don't actually spend two coins. And we get an assassination on Gallert, that is fine. And they're still ahead, so I, I could technically pass now. Um, basically, taking away their double... Yo I mean, they could still pull Joachim later on. Jacques does not have Veil yet. And there's a really juicy target on the field right now. 
And if I play the Salamandra Hideouts, yeah, this actually works pretty well. If I play the Salamandra Hideouts, we can go with the Abomination. Self-Poison, but we're at 6 Adrenaline, so he will purify himself by the end of the turn. There we go. And we can now pull that poison from the Mutants Maker on top of one of our opponent's units. Unless, of course, the poison gets removed. But that's not a problem as well, we're just going to keep pushing then. So Jacques does not have Veil yet, so he could technically be destroyed. I also have too many coins right now. I think I'm going to use one of the Sea Jackals to just get our coin count below uh, that number again. So let's just tap him once. And then we're going to play Jacques in the back row. Although I could also just go for the Professor. Jacques is actually... Mm, Professor is better, actually. So let's just put Jacques on the field and just generate a lot of value on the board. There we go. And there we get the first imprisonment charge. I think that's a waste on something like Jacques. We get Roderick of Duntine. And he's going onto Mano Kuhorn, and that's probably going to go into Coup de Grasse, I would think. There we go. That's going to go onto Joachim. Joachim is going to come back to the... Oh, no. He's actually playing Jacques. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. So they don't go for the double Joachim. Fair enough. Fair enough. I could try and grab that jock now. It's risky. I could try that actually. I, I mean, I need to play Vivaldi Bank at some point. Philippa is too far away. Um, let's see, how many coins do I have right now? I have eight. I have eight. That is a lot of coins. I mean, I don't really have a good double poison option right now, so let's just go with Fistek. I can put Fistek on the Van Morlehem Hunter. And that's just gonna give us a full bank again. I could tap the Sea Jackal again, but I don't think it's worth it. So that purifies the poison away, actually. Ah, interesting. Interesting. That's cool. Okay, that was a nice play. So let's tap the Sea Jackal twice. And then just go with Professor to fill the bank again. There's not really a good... Although I could actually. I could have used Horson Jr. there. I'll do that next. I'll just put the uh, Mutants Maker down now. That gives us another three coins as well. And then we can start, we can actually use Horson Jr. to get rid of those uh, Flaming Rose footmen in the back. And then we get Yanov's Invocation, of course, on the Sea Jackal. That was to be expected as well. We still have a full coin purse. Yeah, I'm gonna push with Horson now. Let's put some damage on Jacques and then use two charges to kill the uh, Flaming Rose footmen. There we go. Still nine points ahead, something that our opponent is going to have to bridge. And then we get... Okay, so the triple... Oh, they use their second leader charge. That is interesting. Um, that means that I have to go all out now. They get three spying... That's five spying units. So if they play a seditious aristocrat, it's going to go over. Which cards do I still have left? I still have Sigi. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm gonna risk it. So let's just play Professor now on the um, Fangs of the Empire in the back. It's gonna kill it and give us another four coins. There we go. Should have actually taken out the Imperial Divine because if they play Assimilate somehow now, yeah, like that. Uh, wouldn't have actually mattered. The Usurper is actually strong enough to uh, go over us regardless. So we're gonna have to pass this round and go into the last round. With what kind of looks like card disadvantage, but we still have a sealed jackal. We have three coins to start with, so we still have stuff to work with. So, not a lost cause just yet. We also have that poison that we can uh, shift around if we want to. We actually get a double fist stack trafficker. That is definitely not something we can use. Shakedown is also not something I'm going to use. Uh, we get shakedown again. Damn, that's, that was probably, that was really bad. Really bad luck of the draw there. Because uh, that makes it look like I'm going to have to spend 
either a poison on that Nausicaa Sergeant, which is something that I definitely don't want to do, or we want to, we need to use Sigi really early. Yeah, let's poison, let's poison the Nausicaa Sergeant. Um, it seems to be the best option at the moment. We don't have a good way of uh, clearing out cards at the moment. And we got Masquerade Ball now, of course. Okay. So that means that we're gonna be facing another double poison. Let's use the Fistack Trafficker to take out the Nausicaa Sergeant, but this doesn't look too good. If they manage to actually pull out both poisoners from Masquerade Ball, then we are gonna be toast. So we get our first Aristocrat, nice giving us the first poison on the Fistack Trafficker, but of course we can move it. Uh, so we can get rid of this poison and put it on the Thirsty Dame. We don't have another poison, but it's important because I'm actually going to purposefully waste a coin here. So I'm going to use Shakedown on the Fistack Trafficker because that's going to give me one more turn that I don't need to put my um, last Sea Jackal on the field. Because it's going to be a very big Sea Jackal. And yeah... That's, that's just gonna hurt otherwise. I mean, if the last, if their last card is uh, Vincent van Mordheim, then I'm gonna be done regardless, and they get Coup de Grasse. I forgot about Coup de Grasse, that was still in there as well. Um, and we're not gonna pull the Rudanian, the Flying Rudanian anymore, but that was only six points for them. I think we're good. I think we're good. Calculating my odds here, if I put the Sea Jackal over there, then tap it completely. So fill it up completely, then use Sigi for another 9 coins, and now we tap it again. We're at 34, 16, and I don't think our opponent has any options to remove it again, because it doesn't have a status. Yeah, there's no unit with status at the moment, and we got only one single poison, which is only 5 extra points. Okay, that was a good play. So just keep... Keep in mind that those Sea Jackals are a very big target, but if you can play around it, that uh, actually works out really well. Let's do another one. Oh, we're facing actual Crimes now. That is going to be interesting as well. Because Crimes has actually received kind of a lot of debuffs, with Cleveland not being as powerful and stuff like that. So this is going to be interesting. Crimes usually don't tend to play all that many poisons as well, so... Should be able to be good here. I'm gonna get rid of one of the Fistech Traffickers. Um, and I don't want to risk pulling anything else with my final mulligan. Because if I pull a second sewer raided or the Redanian, uh, the flying Redanian, that's gonna be really bad. So let's just finish redrawing for now. Not the best hand, but we got a few good cards out of that at least. And we get a very hefty start with all Neuromancy in one go. That's probably gonna go okay, Furco and then Overgradient Justice, I would assume. Because that's what these guys usually play. There we go, over Gradient Justice. And then that's going to be, yeah, one of the safe crackers. I'm going to be able to see how many crime cards there, that's in their hand, so that's five. So the tax collector is going to die immediately. That's, that's just a, a fact of life. Uh, so we might as well just put it down right over here. It's going to get hit with a hefty, hefty hit. But six coins is something that we have. Crimes has the advantage on blue coin here. They can just kill whatever is coming across the board. So even if I yeah, try out something fancy, I think I'm actually going to put the Salamandra hideout on the board already. Uh, although it's not going to get purified just yet. So let's hold off on that just a little bit. I don't have enough coins to actually play the sewer raiders just yet. Um, so I think Roland is going to be an option. Although, of course... They'll definitely be able to take it out, but if they want to take it out, it's a huge waste of coins, regardless. Because bloody good fun could take it out, but again, you're wasting a lot of points, uh, coins when doing that, because that drains all of their coins and they have seven in the bank right now. So I'm banking on the fact that they don't... Ah, they're going to do it regardless. Okay. That just puts them down at one coin, uh, and we lost Roland there. Um, so yeah, our opponent doesn't really... Want to have want us to have many coins there, which makes sense. Yeah, since we don't have Roland anymore, regardless, I'm gonna poison the halfling safe cracker. At least gives us four five coins, so we can start building towards that. And we get a pass. Interesting. So that is actually not something that you wanna do. Um, 
just a bit of a tip against Syndicate, because I can just use my tinning cards. Uh, so that's 8 to 16. I can just calmly count my cards. Um, and if I really want to, I could even use a Sea Jackal, but I don't think that's going to be absolutely necessary. Um, since we're facing Syndicate as well, I think Poisoning is not going to be that useful, but Shakedown can go. So that's a card that we can use, giving us 8 coins. Uh, and I think if I use Gallard, yeah, if I use Gallard now, I don't think I'm going to be that, it's not going to be that. Although, wait. If I Vistack Trafficker myself, I gain the Flying Redanian as well. So I'm going to poison myself, giving us a full bank, and that's going to pull out the Flying Redanian as well. Just giving us one extra point. So that was basically a whole lot of setup <laughs> to giving us basically only two coins in the final round. But it's uh, it's just good for tinning. I lost most of my cards that I want to get rid of. I used bronzes only. Uh, I think all of them were four power bronzes, so that was really good. And I only wasted about two, two uh, poisons there as well. So I think I'm going to keep the poison on the fist stack here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the Mutants Maker to just try and grab those very high-powered units. I'm actually going to get rid of fist stack as well in the hopes of getting yeah something other than that. But it's, uh, it's better than nothing, I suppose. There we go. We're going to pause, of course. So we went from 9 to 4 coins because it gets halved, of course, and then in the last round we're going to have 2 coins. Our opponents will most likely have more because they have uh, 3 cards now as well that they can play. But yeah, I couldn't really risk uh, getting anything else out. It's actually funny to see how much thinning Novigrade Justice actually represents because they actually went to the same amount of cards as we did in one turn because of Furco, Novigrade Justice, and then the Halfling Safecracker. So that was double thinning. Um, basically allowing allowing them to tend their deck way more efficiently than we ever could. Um, and they only play a Sea Jackal. It must be that they have a very, very powerful hand. But the last round is where everything starts to matter. We get Philippa, which is really good. We get Shock and we get Sigi. Okay. That is everything that a man would desire, I think. There's nothing else I would really want. I mean, I could go really wild and try and get Caesar as well, but that's basically the only card that's still in my deck that is not just a bronze card. I'm gonna try. Vivaldi. Ah, might as well okay, take Vivaldi then for the flexibility. I don't technically have a double poison, but with uh, Gallard and Salamander we have one, and then with Vivaldi we have another if you want to take out something really, really big. So let's finish redrawing over here. And then I think oh, we get Sigi first. We get Siggy first, so knowing the combo between Siggy and Caesar, I would want to take out Siggy just in case that they also have Caesar in the deck. I've seen that happen a few times. So let's just kill Siggy with um, the Professor, as well taking out an Intimidate engine, of course. So our opponent goes for Sir Skewer Tooth. We won't be able to take out that because that is immune. So that's just going to be a very tall unit that's going to keep growing on that their side of the field. Um, I think Soul might actually be Soul. Do we do we play Soul? We're not yet at a high enough point total, I think, to play Soul. Um, I think Shark might actually even better. I waste one coin with Shark. Soul triggers at nine. I can't effectively get to a proper number here. I'm only at 9 cards at the moment, so playing Vivaldi Bank now would be a waste. I think Shark is the better option, even though I waste a coin with that. No, I'm gonna put Soul down. Yeah, let's put Soul down. He's probably gonna get destroyed regardless, um, so we don't wanna... Yeah, waste that card too much. Our opponent contemplating what they're gonna do with Soul. I'm guessing we're gonna get Philip out here. Okay. But that's good. That's good, because they won't have any coins. Unless they use line pockets. They do. That puts them up to six. Okay. That's actually not too bad. I think I'm gonna use... I can actually grab that back if I want to. So I can use Horson Jr. So if I use Horson Jr. now, he goes to 2. Even if they manage to get him up to 5 with a full bank, they won't be able to do anything else. 
unless they actually boost him with uh yeah we'll see uh yeah let's let's just let's just hit soul soul with horson jr i should have probably used horson jr for cleaver which is definitely gonna come now but i can still steal cleaver as well if they want to go for cleaver i think cleaver is probably going to be although soul actually ha is a lot of points though they allow me to take soul back i'm going to and then we get cleaver okay so cleaver is gonna go up to five Now the question is, do I take, Cle I think Cleaver is too much points, so I'm actually gonna grab Cleaver. It's, it's really weird to do this, but I'm actually gonna grab Cleaver. So there we go. Still 6-6, six, six, but I still have two pirates in the, in the bank as well, so the two sea jackals are still there. So I'm absolutely fine with this. I could have actually killed Soul with the, uh, yeah, I should have probably done that. I could have killed Sol with uh, Horson Jr. And I didn't. That was my mistake. I'm thinking... I'm gonna use the Salamandra hideout now. Uh, and use that on a Salamandra Abomination. It gets purified this time. So that's again 7 points. And we spend our final coin with that. Which was very important. Because now we have an empty bank to put Sigi Aruven on top of it. Because remember Sigi is going to just give us 9 coins. And that's going to be very very handy to use after this. And then we get Tunnel Drill. Uh, tunnel Drill is going to be 3. Yeah, 3 every single time. The Abomination was not the problem there. So I think we're actually fine. But still, Tunnel Drill is still very, very powerful, so if we can do something about that, but it doesn't look like we'll be able to. Um, because there's no real aggressive play here. Um, and Tunnel Drill is going to be able to kill anything that comes across the board. So I'm just going to try and save up just a little bit. Do we need to purify anything? I don't think so, but let's, let's just pay, play uh, Siggy here. For nine coins, I could dump them into um, Cleaver there. But that's just, yeah, five points for four. I could, but I'm not going to, I think. Yeah, I want to keep those coins. And there we get the Flying Redanian back. And then a full bank in one go. Our opponent doesn't really care about maintaining that soul, apparently. So Cleaver is also gone. Okay, just killing everything apparently. Vroom, 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 vroom with the tunnel drill. There's no real big target here. So I think I'm actually gonna play our first Sea Jackal. Yeah, let's play our first Sea Jackal. Tap it once so it's up to seven. I could actually tap it again. I'm gonna tap it again. Use Gallard Blindheim to poison uh, whatever I actually want to poison. Uh, should probably poison something so it's not a multiple of three. Uh, so that means the Sea Jackal again. Sea Jackal. And then we can move this to the Tunnel Drill so it at least gets destroyed next turn. There we go. And then we get Dip in the Pontar. Three damage and three coins. And the Tunnel Drill keeps existing. We get hit on the Sea Jackal, which means that our opponent probably does not have a way of taking out a large unit. So what that means to me is I'm gonna use... If I use Kurt now to actually put a bounty, but yeah. Are there gonna be double poisons left? Probably not. I could kill the Tunnel Drill, but is that gonna be worth it? No, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to manage the amount of coins that I'm gonna get unless they purify it no I don't want to risk them purifying the uh, the tunnel drill so let's do this um get the fistack trafficker out yeah fistack trafficker out uh poison it over here there we go and now we can now we can keep the coin count like this it's gonna be close their main engines are gone so if they still have ways of getting coins, they're not going to be able to spend them efficiently. So there they get 
more coins, but they don't have, have an efficient way of spending them. Uh, so let's put Jacques... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's put down the second sea jackal. Uh, double tap that, so we're at 5 coins, and then we can use Jacques Grandmaster, which is also a 50% update, because we spend 4 coins and we get 6 points in return, so we pay the tribute, and that gives us um, plenty more, and then I think the rest should be good to go. I don't want to overstay my welcome here. I don't know what the last card is going to be. It is? Is that Vivaldi Bank then? No, Jacques, of course. Jacques. So they're actually spending the coins. Yeah, they're going to spend all the coins. But I think they see that it's a lost cause. Because uh, we're just going to... We could bounty something. It doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, we, we have no way of taking it out. Um, but of course, with doubles, sea jackals, and one on shark, we actually have a two-point lead on our opponent. That was actually pretty risky. I should have probably kept Horson Jr. to kill something else, because that was just a, a waste of a 6 damage there, but we still managed to uh, get up on top, even with that mistake. So, remember to keep your Horson Jr. for something that is definitely worth it, because that tunnel drill needed to die a lot sooner than it did. But I think that's part of the charm of these, uh, these deck guides. You guys can learn, you people can learn from my mistakes. So, uh, that's how you should use this deck. So, basically, it's not that bad to be aggressive in your first round. If you need to use something like Professor or Horson Jr. in the first round, do so. I think the ideal first round would be to use Sigir Ruven to get an instant full bank, then use uh, Sol de Navarrete, and then just see if you can pass immediately. Because if you have that on the field, there's just so many points that are generated automatically um, that you will get out on top. Uh, maybe even a, a pass from your opponent and get that first round. It's just so powerful in that first round to do that. But otherwise, don't be afraid to use something like Professor Orson Jr., not both, preferably, uh, to get that first round. And keep to your bronzes, just generating coins and then spending those if you need to in round one, also just spending those with a Sea Jackal. Those things are really, really powerful to use your coins with. And there's plenty of ways to get coins. As you saw, you can easily get your bank to full in just uh, one or two turns. Especially with the strategy as well, with those five coins. It's just a matter of counting your coins again. Because that is what's, what Syndicate is about. You just need to count your coins and make sure that you don't waste too many of your coins. That you don't gain coins when you get full bank that you don't overspend on what you want to actually achieve as well. Um, so that's it for the Treasure Trove deck. Because I know, I know we're at the sad end of the episode again. Sadly, I have to end it here. But thank you enormously for watching. As always, thank you enormously for your support. Because there's more and more people joining the channel. I'm really happy to see that. If you have any feedback, let me know. If, what do you think about this deck? What do you think about the way I'm handling these deck guides? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you have any tips to improve. Because that's what we're here for after all. Trying to help each other out. If you want to talk further, you can also find me on Twitter at, at Trovinut. That's T R. O V N U T. If you haven't noticed that already, you can find me there as well as the deck guide. Uh, the link to the Play Grant website is in the description, as well as our meta snapshot from Team Elder Blood, because uh, this deck is our top meta deck. One of our two top meta decks, actually. The other one is the Fist of Flurry, which I think I'm gonna be taking a look at next time. But uh, before that, thank you again enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.